Fa Mariama. So long a letter, 1989, to Abba Yang, pure and constant, lucid and thorough, who shares my feelings. To Annette D'Erneville of the warm heart and level head. To all women and to men of good will, one. Dear Isatu, I have received your letter. By way of reply, I am beginning this diary, my prop in my distress. Our long association has taught me that confiding in others allays pain. Your presence in my life is by no means fortuitous. Our grandmothers in their compounds were separated by a fence and would exchange messages daily. Our mothers used to argue over who would look after our uncles and aunts. As for us, we wore out wrappers and sandals on the same stony road to the Quranic school, we buried our milk teeth in the same holes and begged our fairy godmothers to restore them to us, more splendid than before. If over the years, and passing through the realities of life, dreams die, I still keep intact my memories, the salt of remembrance. I conjure you up. The past is reborn, along with its procession of emotions. I close my eyes. Ebb and tide of feeling, heat and dazzlement, the wood fires, the sharp green mango, bitten into in turns, a delicacy in our greedy mouths. I close my eyes. Ebb and tide of images, drops of sweat beating your mother's ochre-colored face as she emerges from the kitchen, the procession of young wet girls chattering on their way back from the springs. We walked the same paths from adolescence to maturity, where the past begets the present. My friend, my friend, my friend. I call on you three times. 1. Yesterday you were divorced. Today I am a widow, Madhu is dead. How am I to tell you? One does not fix appointments with fate. Fate grasps whom it wants, when it wants when it moves in the direction of your desires. It brings you plenitude. But more often than not, it unsettles, crosses you. Then one has to endure. I endure the telephone call, which disrupted my life. A taxi quickly hailed. Fast. Fast. Faster still. My throat is dry. There is a rigid lump in my chest. Fast faster still. At last, the hospital, the mixed smell of suppurations and ether. The hospital distorted faces, a train of tearful people, known and unknown, witnesses to this awful tragedy. A long corridor, which seems to stretch out endlessly. At the end, a room. In the room, a bed. On the bed, Maud is stretched out, cut off from the world of the living by a white sheet in which he is completely enveloped. A trembling hand moves forward and slowly uncovers the body. His hairy chest, at rest forever, is visible through his crumpled blue shirt with thin stripes. This face, set in pain and surprise, is indeed his, the bald forehead, the half-open mouth are indeed his. I want to grasp his hand. But someone pulls me away. I can hear Motto, his doctor friend, explaining to me, a heart attack came on suddenly in his office while he was. Dictating a letter. The secretary had the presence of mind to call me. Motto recounts. How he arrived too late with the ambulance. I think, the doctor after death. He mimes the massaging of the heart that was undertaken, as well as the futile effort at mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Again, I think, heart massage, mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, ridiculous weapons against the divine will. I listen to the words that create around me a new atmosphere in which I move, a stranger and tormented. Death, the tenuous passage between two opposite worlds, one tumultuous, the other still. Where to lie down? Middle age demands dignity. I hold tightly onto my prayer beads. I tell the beads ardently, remaining standing on legs of jelly. My loins beat as to the rhythm of childbirth. Cross-sections of my life spring involuntarily from my memory, grandiose verses from the Quran, noble words of consolation fight for my attention. Page 3 Joyous miracle of birth, dark miracle of death. Between the two, a life, a destiny, says Mato Ba. I look intently at Mato. He seems to be taller than usual in his white overall. He seems to me thin. 
His reddened eyes express forty years of friendship. I admire his. Noble hands, hands of an absolute delicacy, supple hands used to tracking down illness. Those hands, moved by friendship and a rigorous science, could not save his friend.